You gotta pass the mic. Pass the mic. You gotta pass the mic. When I was young, I was starting to fight, but I watched the news and find he's all right. G.I. Joe's back on the scene with all sorts of death dealer machines. Nerf gas, name pot, ICBM. Tell me, Lord, who this man ever is. We forget about sorrow, we forget about pain. Wake up, Pete, we've been sleeping again. Pass the mic. You gotta pass the mic. Pass the mic. You gotta pass the mic. Hello, good evening everyone. It is so good to be in your great company tonight. Thank you for braving the cold. Welcome to Pass Me the Mic, a Black History, Black Futures storytelling experience. My name is Adina Duke. I work here at the Spencer Museum of Art and it is our great honor to host this event and be in community with each of you. On behalf of the Spencer Museum and Black Lawrence, we're so grateful to have the support from so many partners across campus. And we especially want to thank KU Student Senate for providing essential funding to make this event possible, and to our 10 other partners for teaming up with us in various ways. And in no particular order, we thank Museum Studies, African and African American Studies, English, History of Black Writing, Office of Multicultural Affairs, Emily Taylor Center for Women and Gender Equity, Theater and Dance, Visual Art, the Crest Foundation, Department of Art History, and the Art History Graduate Student DEAI Committee. I also want to acknowledge that this event is taking place during Black History Month and that we recognize Black History 365 as it is made and must be recognized every day. Pass Me the Mic represents the third iteration of one KU student's research and creative exploration. Naomi Madhu first flexed her writing and digital storytelling skills by creating an anthology on the origins and legacy of hip hop correcting the narrative perpetuated by mainstream media and restoring agency to people to tell their own stories. When the Spencer Museum announced an open call for students to propose installations in Marvin Grove, just behind me, for the museum's annual Backyard Bash, Naomi jumped at the chance and the challenge to expand her ideas into sculptural form. Not an easy task for a strategic communications major. The awarded students created work in response to the theme understories by exploring stories untold, hidden histories, and ideas about place. In the midst of a nationwide reckoning with public monuments and as gentrification and land use debates continue to threaten sites of significance, Naomi constructed a monument to the birthplace of hip hop. A street sign marking Sedgwick Avenue and a series of posters and a mesh microphone with QR codes translocated viewers to the Bronx and commemorates what went down in the rec room and in history at an apartment at 1520 Sedgwick when a young Jamaican immigrant played his first breakbeat experiments at his sister's back to school birthday bash. So although the installation is no longer on view, tonight's event is a performative and participatory extension of it. And this third iteration of Pass Me the Mic aims to bridge genres and generations by featuring both students and professional artists creating across artistic disciplines. So you'll hear from Naomi, as well as celebrated Black Lawrence artists Barry Barnes, Ty Avery Spawn Ryan, and Alex Kimball Williams. And then they pass the mic to you. The exhibition enveloping us now is titled Debut, and it features an eclectic mix of works in the collection that have never been exhibited in the museum, some of which have been held in storage for decades, and others which have just recently come into the collection, alongside what, over time, have become some of our most iconic works frequently used in teaching and research. So in the context of Debut, Pass Me the Mic prompts us to consider moments in time when new ideas and creative expression pass from the private realm of the artist to the public spotlight, leaving their mark on history and influencing new generations of artists. <coughs> so just a couple quick housekeeping notes for you. The event is two hours. You'll hear from our four featured artists in the first hour, then we'll take a short intermission, stretch our, our legs and our imaginations exploring the galleries, and then the mic is open for the second hour. Sign-up sheet is on the table back there, and um, we'll wrap up at 7.30, and then the galleries stay open until 8, so feel free to, to linger. Because the museum is a non-traditional dynamic performance and social space, we do encourage you to explore the galleries freely for a multi-sensory experience. And in the adjacent gallery, which you can access that way or around the corner here, 
We encourage you um, to check out the projection of additional works in the collection by black artists, as well as a few black allies, which is running on a loop and was curated by Naomi and Spencer intern Maggie Brown Peoples. Just be mindful that the galleries are packed with art at every turn, so please be mindful of your proximity and understand if I or another staff member ask you to take a step back, don't lean on the walls, that kind of thing. We've got free pencils over there if anyone wants to write or sketch. Um, we also have copies of Beautiful Ashe, Ty Omri's book, um, which are available for purchase over by the sign-up sheet. And photography is welcome and encouraged, uh, just without flash. We are live streaming for the first hour on our YouTube page, and we'll be recording both hours. <clears throat> so for those of you who wish to participate in the open, open mic, just be sure to circle um, your, your decision on the sign-up sheet if you're okay with us uh, broadcasting it. So with that, I invite you to join me in welcoming the evening. Thank you, Adina, for that introduction. Um, hi, everyone. I want to say before I begin, so I'll be reading three poems today, two of which are from Passing the Mic, in the order they appear on in the anthology. Um, this is the first time I'm reading my poetry out loud. But <laughs> thank you. Um, with the my whole idea behind the anthology was to bring the mainstream to hip hop as opposed to bringing hip hop to the mainstream. Um, that said, there is strong language, so keep an open mind. <laughs> um, and feel free to snap or interact however you would like to. This first piece is called Girls Just Wanna Have Sex. It smells of vice, it's a hobby. I'm sugar and spice. I'm Whitney, your Bobby. And if I wanna dance with somebody, I will. Oh, mama dear, don't hug me. Or not the shook ones. I'm mob deep. This right here? It's pricey. I'm hyphy. No, not wifey. But I'll shake some ass if you ask me nicely. And throw up some money for the honey bun. Because girls just want to have sex. It's not a sin. It's a dream. When they go low, I rise like the cream. I mean, say what you want. But I've seen. I've conquered. I've come. Oh, daddy dear, you're still number one. Papi, escucha la letra de esta canción. Turn around, let me see some action, uh-uh. You know you gotta spend some cash, do the dash, shake it fast, if it's trash, I'm a pass. I know I'm not done. Cause girls just wanna have sex. It's sweet, but it's not candy. They want more, but I'm not Mandy. Back up, grow a pear. Maybe some mangoes and oranges. Soon I'll be hanging four inches off the ground. They want more lynching. I'm the shook one now. You're always rapping about cock. That's obscene. I'm about. Someone's parents are going to have a cow. What's beef? Beef is when the platform falls below your feet and you're left to steep in hot water like tea. Don't patronize me. Call the FCC. They don't like my lyricism. I think it's sexism, so I sold the sex, but I got all this criticism. You bought this, son. You owe me one. Because girls just want to have financial security. Some boys take a beautiful girl and hide her away. They get married with kids and a 401k. And look, he drives a Hyundai, goes to his nine to five on Monday. But you know what I say? Who needs an IRA? I'll leave my cake, you can have the rest. They sign the checks, I'm breaking next. So say it loud, this part's the best. Girls just wanna have sex. Thank you. This next piece is called, sorry, I didn't catch that. There's perkies in my pocket, I can't stop it. She threw them down the sink and turned on the faucet, but I'm still high and I don't give a fuck if I die tonight, I'm George Street. Here for a good time, not a long time. I'm like the temptations. I've got sunshine and moonshine too. My pupils are wide, my veins are fried. We shot up the Coke, the fridge told a joke, it was cool. His lips are blue and him too. And did the cactus just call me a fool? I think I took too many shrooms. More like 26 caps, now the room's spinning. I'm higher than the ceiling, sealing off the door so they don't catch us. Shut up, cactus. This lean wasn't mixed right. This room is too bright. And hey, did somebody add Sprite? Just give me a Valium and call it a night. 
These niggas ain't saying nothing. His words are empty. His tails are tall. He didn't do nothing. His voice is raspy. He's smoking that shit and won't stop coughing. Take his ass straight to a coffin. His words are empty. He's scared to tempt me. He's bluffing. The club stays open for me. We're the ones that came to see. It's gonna be a movie, count the scenes. Yo, that bitch can twerk in jeans. But she might twerk right through those seams. She's pretty like Mariah. I like her, but I won't buy her a Birkin or whatever. It's hot and I don't know whether I can make it to the bar. The stage seems pretty far. Can someone turn on the music? That's my song. It's like jazz and funk fused with trap and punk rock. I don't know the words, but these girls are dancing. She thinks my clothes are fancy, I'm antsy. We'll hide in the back room. She'll suck me like a vacuum or a vampire. She plays the bassoon so it makes sense. She keeps using words like acquiescence. She goes to Penn State. She's a college girl. She's got a lot on her plate. But she needs to hurry up. I can't make everyone wait. Maybe after the show, I'll come back and we can fornicate. These niggas ain't saying nothing. His words are empty. He didn't do nothing. His appetite is hefty. He's chasing the cherry. He wants that cake and the muffin. His words are empty. He'll take her for a ride like a Bentley. He ain't saying nothing. He's mumbling. I'll make it rain all night. These hundreds fall in at the speed of light. I have bank rolls for all my hoes. And when I'm in the club, it snows. I said I'm in the club. He knows. I'm blowing up now. These girls be going crazy when I throw in the towel. I have to stay on track. Can y'all hear me in the back? This chain costs five racks, and that's facts. This paper is so long, call it a dissertation. My beach Haitian. She got a tennis bracelet to go with the Cuban link and the mink. I throw this money round, it's in rotation. My whole team got stone cold faces. You can check the grills or count the bills. This money's so tall, it'll cause an earthquake when it falls. I throw a stack at Chantel as my friends drag me back to the hotel for the after party. We're drinking Ace of Spades and Hennessy. I'm D4L cause I bet you can't do it like me. It's exciting. I think I need another Maserati. These niggas ain't saying nothing. His words are empty, he didn't do nothing. His pockets are heavy. He's spending a bag on the matching luggage. His words are empty. He ain't worth a penny. I can't listen to this, it's garbage. The after after party is starting. There's a bouncer and he's carding everyone at the door. Someone left a 4-4 on the floor and it's packed inside. I tried and tried, but it fits so perfect in my hand. The bathroom is empty, so here I stand. The man in the mirror looks like me, but he's a different brand. I've only got one shot. I'll do what I can. This bottle is empty. This barrel is... Thank you. This last piece is something I started to write at the beginning of the semester, just reflecting on how I feel. Um, returning to my sweet, sweet PWI. <laughs> it's called Can You Hear Me? It was originally about my classmates who, was, who just wouldn't shut up. It's about more people now. You know, they'll come for you in different ways. But this um, poem is dedicated to all the angry black women out there. I do not declare myself to be or not, to have or to go without. My silence is not a drought, but the only thing I get to choose. I have more to lose. I mean, we do. My sanity is the last resort, so I'll keep my mouth shut, thank you very much. But can you hear me if I talk? This is the worst feeling, this absence of peace, the thing I give away listening to this shit. I mean, what would you think if I did more than blink or twitch or sigh? And who the hell is this guy who sits here and passes the time with lies and all this nonsense? His mind is empty, but he's relentless. I truly can't stand this anymore. I'm shaking and shivering. I can feel it in my core. And I may be a lion, but I will not roar. I don't care if I'm the one the only one, the only one he cuts with his dismissive tongue. I don't care. I won't bring to light what you're comfortable hiding. I'm an anti-hero and you don't need saving. I'm the only one and you see it too. 
My eyes are brown, his are blue, and I will not review, discuss, or engage. It's Black History Month. It's not my birthday. I said, can you hear me? Do you know what I'm saying? Am I too emotional? Should I not be complaining? You wanted me to say something, to use my angry black voice. So here is my angry black thought. It's Black History Month. Time to be black as fuck and loud and ratchet and ghetto. Time to wear my kente and my afro while they take my vote, spite my nose, and send me back to where I came from, but only after they hashtag support black women, hashtag black girl magic, hashtag black excellence, hashtag queen, hashtag BLM. But anyway... These are things I might say if I said anything at all. Thank you. Well, that was awesome. Wow. <laughs> Okay, well, um, thank you so much. Wow. Following that up, um, I'm going to be playing on the synthesizers. My name is Alex Kimball Williams. I use she, her, they, them. Um, I'm joined by two other Black Lawrence members, Barry and Tyam Marie, and we're going to do some poetry and music uh, combinations for you tonight, and I think I'm on first. So I'm going to transfer this. So the first one I'm going to do was actually completed in uh, collaboration with the residency that I just finished uh, this last uh, December uh, with the Community Housing of Wyandotte County in Kansas City. And uh, I was really excited to work on a project called Black and uh, Red and Black. And uh, I call my projects um, in general Bad Alaska and I'm Black and Alaska. And uh, so you can find myself on SoundCloud, Bandcamp, um, a little bit on YouTube, if people still use that, um, on Instagram. You're on YouTube right now. Yeah, yeah, you're right. It's, it's happening. It's right now. Um, so yeah, um, during my sets, especially for tonight, um, I encourage you to meditate, um, chill out. If you rush here and didn't use the restroom yet, go ahead and do that. You know, use this time. Um, relax your jaw. Um, allow your tongue not to be on the roof of your mouth. Relax your shoulders. Just chill out. Um, and if you're curious about what I'm doing, you can walk up here, like you really can. You can walk up here and see what I'm doing. Um, but yeah, feel free to chill out, but definitely check out the art too. That's an, you're definitely welcome to do that.
first shows where um, I did some poetry about black hair. So. Thank you. 
you so much. That'll be all from me tonight. Like I said, you can find some of my stuff online. I'm not very good about that, but I, I swear one of these days I, I will upload more and you can you can access this. But um, there, there is some online. Uh, I want to give a shout out really quick to Ryan. Good job on sound and audio vision, visuals. Doing really well. And I'm going to pass it off to Barry. Um, Barry is an awesome uh, musician and a performer, dancer, Zumba instructor, everything you need, he's got it. Um, so I'm excited uh, to hear some of him tonight as well. Thank you. There it is, howdy. My name is Barry Barnes. Uh, I'm a poet, professional washboard player. Um, I've been a mime and a clown. Uh, I was a Zumba instructor for 10 years. And today I'm going to do a loop demonstration. Um, usually I'll have like a few loops laid out and stuff, but I'm gonna do a thing called making the sausage, which means that uh, I'm gonna build a song from the ground up, and so there might be some mistakes, so bear with me. All right, let's do this. War is stupid. Back on the scene with all sorts of death dealing machines, nerf gas, napalm, ICDM, 
Tell the Lord what this madness never ends. We forget about sorrow, we forget about pain. Wake up, people, we are sleeping again. Brothers and sisters come together, despite their health, despite the weather. They come from all walks of life. Tired of the hate, tired of the fight. You are my sister, you are my brother. I know this because the earth is our mother. We are connected in so many ways to deny this will cause decay. Decay of the mind, decay of the body, decay of the soul, decay of the world as we know it today. You see, we are not different colors. We are different shades, a variation on the same theme. And this is why we celebrate, because there's only one race, the human race. Pass the mic. Pass me the mic. You gotta pass the mic. Pass the mic. You gotta pass the mic. Pass the mic. One day, me and the boys, me and the brothers and sisters, we was down on the block, out in the street, celebrating a little too loud, a little too proud. When I dream. I saw the ghost of Karen coming down the way. She was in a hyped up minivan. Her quaff was perfect. And she was yelling, 911, 911. She was bumping, make America grand, make America proud. And I said, the American dream makes me want to scream. It's like we're allowed to dream, but we're not allowed to achieve. We'll smoke and drink to enhance our dreams. Down fly south where the minds here ring. It seems the American dream has turned to American greed. Nothing is sacred anymore. If it stands in the way of a profit, it dies. I have an idea. Why do not the manufacturers and distributors of alcohol beverages help repair broken homes? Probably because they're too busy reaping a profit. It's like they've achieved their dreams and closed the door behind them. Corporate farms. Government farms, national farms, international farms, industrial farms, atomic farms. What have happened to the family farm? Probably pleased out too with the American dream. Oh well, we have our rights. Let me read them to you. You have the right to remain silent. You have the right to remain homeless. You have the right to remain unemployed. You have the right to remain uneducated. You have the right to remain intoxicated. You have the right to remain incarcerated. You have the right to remain unvaccinated. You have the right to remain unmasked. You have the right to an attorney if you can afford one. Just dial 1-800-ATTORNEY. Have your credit card numbers ready. Our psychics are waiting. You have the right to an attorney if you can afford one. And anything you say and do will be held against you in the court of law. In fact, they might even take it from you and beat you with it. Beat you with it. Pass the mic. You gotta pass the mic. You gotta pass the mic. Pass the mic. You gotta pass the mic. Pass the mic. Pretty smart as you can see. And in a wink of an eye, the master changes the dog's mind with beer and TV, which makes the dogs blind. And if they don't mind, they take their beer and TV and they go back home, back home to their prospective ghettos, trailer parks, reservations, thanking the master as they leave, giving him their last pieces of silver and green. And so the dogs go home and they get drunk and they fight over their beers and TVs, and the master can't have this. So he slams down his fist and says, Clear all the halls, arrest all the dogs, throw them in jail, they all belong in hell, take their TVs. As well, I know the story is true because I've seen it on TV, and I usually don't believe everything I see. 
So this is like an imaginary rap battle that I have in my head sometimes. So we're gonna pass the mic to my brain. You say you're rapping, and your lips are flapping. Well, I'm telling you, it just ain't happening. I'm from the hood, the universal hood, and I'm a rap like a rap person should. Well, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3. Listen up, I hope your rap is truly funny. I'm going to eat you up like a plate of macaroni. My rap's so fine, it's blowing your mind. It's kicking all the other inches right in the mind. Rap shot all the time, but your rap's a crap. And if you can't see that, you gotta be blind. Your rap's hanging in the air like pollution everywhere. You gotta put it in the wash with your dirty underwear. Cause I'm the boss. Applesauce, when I start to rap, you're at a loss. So don't give me no lift. Potato chip, to cut you know my rap is truly devastatingly hip. I don't need your Cadillac said I don't need you smoke your crap. I don't need your old gold chains. I don't need your material. Things. All I need is a soul so through so load up what you need to make it move. Everything to gain, everything to lose. Do the right thing and make the move. Don't want to step up to the mic, gonna give you a fright. You don't get upset, don't get up tight. Everything's cool. Out of sight, I said I just want a party all damn night. Pass the mic. Pass the mic. You gotta pass the mic. Pass the mic. Pass the mic to me. Oh, say, can you see me? When the bells of pieces down, we'll be standing on common ground. All the hatred that I know will be struck on out the door. When the bells of peace resound, we'll be standing on common ground. Will you lift your brother's weight? Will you share your sister's fate? When the bells of peace resound, we'll be standing on common ground. When they break up all the bread, everybody will be fed. When the bells of peace resound, we'll be standing on common ground. When you rest your weary bones, you know you can use my hope. When the bells of peace resound, We'll be standing on common ground. There'll be no more locks on doors. There'll be no more silly wars. When the bells of peace is out, we'll be standing on common ground. When the bells of peace is out, we'll be standing on common ground. When the bells of peace is out, we'll be standing on common ground. When the bells of peace is out, we'll be standing on common ground. When the bells of peace is out, we'll be standing on common ground. When the bells of peace is out, we'll be I love the sound of rain, pitter patter. If you ask me if I believe in magic, I'll say yes, I believe in magic. I believe in the magic of love. I believe that love is the only true magic, and if you don't, well that's truly tragic. When you hang a blow, it's never too late. When you don't think you ought to get an empty plate, the human race would have died long ago. Without love, I think so. Taste best friends are pain and grief. Love good friends are joy and peace. Come on, everybody, tell me who you are. Hang with, I hope and pray that you all chose love. Pass the mic. Pass the mic. Pass the mic. You gotta 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 pass the mic. Pass the mic. Pass the mic. Pass the mic. Thank you. Up next is, is my friend Ty, and he's going to have his book, and I'm going to let him tell you all about that. Ty, I'm respect. I say your name wrong every time. <laughs> but uh, yeah, come on up here, and I'll quit being silly.
All right. Um, so what's up, everybody? My name's Ty Amri. Um, I want to give it up for my, my Black Lawrence crew and also Naomi, who set it all for us. That was dope. I don't know. I don't know if Alex told you, but this is this is her first uh, show show since having a little one. So, yeah. And that was my first time hearing that song live. I love that song. I've been listening to it. I like share it with everybody. I love that track. And then Barry. Oh my God, Barry. What was yo? Know, every time I see Barry, is he never does the same thing. It's so fresh every single time. Um, all right. So a little bit about me. My name is Ty Amri. Um, and I am hailing from uh, Lenny Lenape land um, in South Jersey, right outside of Philadelphia. Um, and I'm so, so proud to be a part of this, this project. Um, this show is, is dope so far. Um, hopefully, uh, hopefully I can bring it home. And, um, but I just heard about this, you know, this exhibit um, and it was out back and I was like, yo, this is hip hop is such a big part of my life and my existence as a black man um, growing up on the East Coast uh, with all of its beauty and toxicity. So um, so I'm going to be sharing from from this book of mine, uh, Beautiful Ashe, which was actually edited by Alex Kimball Williams right here. Thank you very much. Um, <laughs> And I have copies, and most, most, mostly I just like, I brought my signing pen because I love, I love writing in books. I love it. Like, I'm one of those people who marks books up, and so I love to like, if you, if you get a book tonight, I love writing something in there. That's my, that's my jam right there. Um, so I'm going to start this off with a poem called, um, that I actually wrote kind of for Alex. It was like for, a, for an MLK um, event. Um, that we were doing over, I think it was at Langston Hughes, um, and I was asked if I would read some poetry, and I was like, I'm gonna write poetry for this event, um, and it's called Afro Future is the Past, and it is, it, is, it is participatory, it's like a guided meditation, okay, so I want you to like sink into this one with me, okay, in honor of Black History Month, in honor of our ancestors and the land we walk upon, Afrofuture is the past. What I want you to do right now is I want you to reach down and clutch the earth seed. Write down what it says to survive the fire next time. Don't forget the grandmothers opened portals through animal skin drums, brought life through song prayers fought devils with head wraps, toppled slave ships with dancing. Lay earth seed secretly on binded tongue. Swallow silently unless they know. You eat forbidden fruits of ancestors that open eyes to mental chains, that call forth your spirit mentor, that tells you your true name before society renamed you. And you learned you are of the seven clans named of the grand practicers. Now ask of yourself, who are you of? Are you of Maya Angelou, queen mother, phenomenal breaker of chains with rhythm stopping bullets, with whirling crowning kings? Are you of Bayard Rustin, angelic troublemaker, picket lines for street kids, the poor and the queer, all are worth fighting for? Are you of Malcolm X, destroyer of lies, prepared to be dragged with philosophy both militant and studied, spiritual beatdowns in the highest form? Are you of Martin Luther King, creator of love, powerful enough to torch walls, challenging us in our zombie minds, embracing the cop cracking your skull? Are you of Octavia Butler, seer of futures that reveal the dark potential of greed, that write love stories with aliens that imagine redeeming our slave science? 
are you of? Harriet Tubman, freer of slaves, silently with a gun for those who might turn back to a world of a scarring that you yourself have survived? Are you of Ella Baker, nurturer of seeds, teaching the young to activate, to revolutionize what is broken, to call on the power of youth force? Find out for yourself Close your physical eyes. Teeth grind the earth seed. Wash it down with juju. Warm it with your inner fire. Speak it with your true voice. Now light it and be it and repair the world. Ashe. All right, so this next one goes out to um, the uh, those who experience the, the terror of, of, of being black in the everyday, um, either, either through direct experience or um, through osmosis. This is to Ahmaud Aubrey. If I were lynched in the streets, my children would avenge me. The moon with her sling, the star with her bone, and my wife, River, with a cauldron. What I mean is, hands off the black godhood. Because you see, if we had trapped a white man between two cars and shot him down, no guns fired. I'd be in a black site jail until the Ku Klux Klan had their grand jury. Instead, I put my head down and wait for Corona to take my six times more likely black self to Sankofa. Sankofa, the black Valhalla. And if you don't believe me, believe that for running, you can lynch a black man. But we won't stop running, not when cops say drop your skin or we'll shoot. Not when doctors claim we don't feel pain. Not when billboards say we don't father the children we raised. Not when jobs burn the names off our applications. Not when crack blocks are a stimulus package. Not when American flags stretch our necks to pledging. Not when our children are sold our mothers confiscated and our backs stripped for a name. Ahmad Aubrey, say his name. <clears throat> so this poem was written um, at the height of uh, the Black Lives Matter movement in Lawrence, Kansas. When we were out in the streets, like felt like every day, every day. So this is uh, a love letter to from the Black Lives Matter movement. The fire next time, he said. The fire next time, bet. Mother of the movement, we see you. Hold this federal fallacy of Ferguson's feet to the flame on the names of your slain babies, we see you. Baton Rouge, we see you. Political prisons to cut off the breath of your fire, we see you. South Africa to Dublin, we see you. We all one black, struggling to get the scars off our back, we see you. Florida, we see you. Breaking guns off in autism's guardian. Back down, hands up in the fire, we see you. Trans folk, we see you. First one to the gun, last song sung, and if flames couldn't help it, we see you. Oakland, we see you. One blood strong, you shut it down. Let it burn to the ground, we see you. Breaker of police chiefs, suffer all mares, we see you. Vanguard of the revolution, gentrifier wet dream, we see you. 
San Francisco, we see you. Shirtless warrior women, we see you. Philly, we see you. In the rubble of the move of Africa, we see you. In the wrist burns of Mumia, we see you. In the talons of Rizzo, we see you. You quake the roots of justice. You shot bells of freedom. Libate our ancestors, Miss Sanchez. Libate Sankofa, we see you. Detroit, we see you. From Ford corrupted lands, we see you. Through leaden waters, we see you. Through riot smoke, a voice broke. Gracely bogs leading to revolution. Don't die, we see you. Mother Emmanuel, we see you. On slave floors in Charleston, we see you. Hiding from fires like the good girl grandma raised, we see you. Black Lives Matter movement, we see you. Burning all reserves on picket lines, we see you. Multicolored movement, we see you. Rageful love, we see you. Come back alive, we see you. Don't lose one more, we see you. Seventh generation, we see you. Sold off in fraudulent bids, we see you. Down enemy scopes, we see you. Our last and only hope, we see you. Drink the milk and run, we'll take their bullets, we see you. My people, we see you. From the burning prairie, Lawrence, fiery Kansas, we see you. Ashe. <laughs> <laughs> you said one more? All right. I do have one more. Wasn't sure if I was going to share it, but my brother Barry said I should. Okay, so, so this one is, um, I'm, a, I'm a school teacher, by the way. I teach, I teach sixth and seventh grade English in Topeka. Um, <laughs> I don't usually get awe when I say that. Usually people cringe when I say that. You know? <laughs> Which I'm not gonna lie, they, they wear me out, y'all. They wear me out. Um, <laughs> but I, I, I love them real hard. And, um, and a couple of years ago, I, I lost one. I mean, I lose, I lose kids all the time. They, they go, they, they get deported. They like, all kinds of crazy stuff happens. But, a couple years, I lost one um, to murder, and she was murdered with her mother. And and black folk know that like when one of us gets murdered, there's not often justice, and um, the funerals are on corners with teddy bears. Um, and this is one of those where they they have never found the murderer. And this this uh. This young woman, after she passed, I wrote this poem for her. In honor of her, I um, called upon uh, a deity named Shango, who is of the West African tradition of Ifa, which is my, my spiritual tradition. Um, Shango is the, the Orisha, or deity of justice and vengeance. And I called upon Shango to rain justice down upon all of us who deny that Black Lives Matter and also the individual who, who caused so much harm to our community. So this is five stages of Shango for Portia Hollow. One, behind her smile is a rage. Hand her my ax as we ride. Adorn her neck with the red and white bead. Whisper the wisdom once more in her ear. She is my cedar planted in Kansas. The white eggshell smudged and reborn in every heart that knew her. The consort of Black Valhalla, my warrior child forever. Two. And somewhere beneath that Rona tragedy is mother and daughter no killer found who stalks her memory without knowing. Shango, Kabiesile, lifted seat, lifts axe to you, foul and cruel. Lava, burn your eyes, carved grooves in face, your judgment, breathless gasps. 
Child smiles tattooed inside your eyelids. The city, Topeka, that fails all you touch, that takes all you nurtured and renders it dust. A balloon in the sky that flies raven forevermore till it falls like acid, like justice on heads unwashed, uncleaned of wicked, not snitched. We'll find you, warrior sister slayer Shango, have mercy. Three, restored Portia to her rightful throne, fixed her crown and makeup, repainted her smile. She no longer dies. She is again who she was, laughing in hallways, dodging homework, the jump up to goaded beats. Black girl magic says she'll live forever if her sister mirrors are made whole. Four, the nothingness of tomorrow, of the black girl in constant suspension, the SRO who cuffs her soul too powerful to be detained. So we lost for all our fighting and the guns always win. Our cash crop must flow, I guess, for American greatness on ventilators. And a balloon is all we have to remember forever. Five, but if she has to go, she should know that smile was all I wanted. That now we know just how hard the heart can rip. Just how easily life can slip. Just what we saw hiding behind that smile. And I'll see you in the lightning and thunder riding with Shango forever, Portia. Ashe. So yeah, I'm just gonna, you know, go ahead and begin with the open mic section. First up, we have Cynthia Colbert. And if I'm saying anyone's name wrong, please let me know. <laughs> but yeah, Cynthia. Okay, I have two. And I, I'm not a pro, so I'm not. But, but anyway, um, this one is called Say His Name. I could speak of a Maud who was running, of George who couldn't breathe, of Trayvon who walked in a hoodie, of Brianna who was sleeping, or Tamir, 12 years old, who was playing. We speak their names. They are embedded in our psyche, residing in our daily consciousness as we run, breathe, walk, sleep, or play, with our third eye open and an ear to the ground. We speak their names, but I want to talk about another man, a righteous man. You didn't know him. His name was Reuben, 38 years old, a wife and three kids, simply having dinner. A knock on the door, uniforms and badges, a faceless, nameless judge and jury of white men. Run, they said, run, you better run. So run, he did. Shots rang out, piercing his spine, in full view of his horrified family, a wife and three kids. Can you hear the screams? Absorb the shards of grief shattering their souls, the lifetime of trauma shape-shifting their realities with its gnarled hands, a wife and three kids. It was June 6th, time of death, 9.30 p.m. The death certificate reads, resisting arrest, the lies you tell. You didn't know him. His name was Reuben. The year, 1953, and he was my grandfather. Say his name. Thank you.
And this last one is called Between Pedestals and the Ground. I wrote this one um, right after uh, the inauguration of uh, President Biden. This weary republic has suffered considerably at the tiny hands of the ochreous one, displaying his vacuous smirk, looking down on those he deems less than him, he who yearned to be king. We, stepping trepidatiously but thunderous, we made our collective voices heard through ballot-soaked tears. We sent a sonorous clap, a resounding slap in the face of asinine orange tyranny and wannabe fascist despotism. I, for one, beamed overjoyed and full for a future replete with hope. In regalia of chucks and pearls, everyone's heads in a whirl, as our choices took the oath to serve. Realizing it's not a panacea, the end all, be all, it's gonna be all right all, fill our pockets full all, prophesying a day arrives when that other shoe drops and we experience the big letdown. Allowing not room enough for their humanity revealed via the power they wield, it is our fault for placing them too high on the pedestal when they reside on the ground. Thank you. That was amazing. Thank you so much, Cynthia. All right, so next up we have Des Granger. I'm going to read some poems. The first one is called The Age of Wakanda. My people have awoken to long lost visions of paradise. Kingdom of heaven, nirvana, Afro-futurist, utopian nation of black Jesus. I don't know about you, but I'm tired of post-apocalyptic. No, white guys, I don't share your existential terror of lost privilege, hemorrhaged on novels and scripts and games of vain, barren survivalism. Ugh. I want to see black people happy on the big screen. I want to see African faces smiling, unashamed. Let sleeping giants awaken in a garden. Let lost tribes find new ways. New homes, new family, new friends, new neighbors. Hope born again. In Wakanda, the technological and spiritual live in harmony. Let the people pray, dream, ask, receive, seek, find, knock, open. In Wakanda, men, women, and every gender live in harmony. My mind was blown when a native friend told me, in my language, Wakanda means highest God. What does Wakanda mean in your language? When you dream of Wakanda, what do you see? And now for the next one. <coughs> This is called, We Remember. The headlines have moved on, but we have not forgotten. The headlines have moved on, but we have not forgotten. Can you see it? Maybe it looks like black and brown fists in the air. Can you see it? Maybe it looked like many faces, one mask, a mask that looks like V, 
Or does it look like A? Or does it look like a fish and a cross before hypocrites made them accessories? Maybe it looks like a covenant drawn in the sky, reflected on a flag, the end of destruction, a brighter day, freedom unto creation. Even giant structures are too small for the creatures of the earth, including us. Can you hear it? Maybe it sound like hammers in the city, sickles in the country. Do you hear the people sing? The words too big to fail under capitalism? What? Markets crashed, bubbles burst, evictions, families crying in the streets, homelessness and bad credit, golden parachutes, bailouts, spineless regulation, two arrests. Rage. Meanwhile, the media fixated on zombies. People in ragged clothes, showing traces of lost bourgeoisie life, breaking down barriers, quickly growing in number. Sounds like fear of uprising projected on movie screens. People of every nation, every tribe, rising from the dead, changing the world, seeing victory, a horror film, or the hope of the masses. Sounds like a new heaven and a new earth. The headlines have moved on, but we have not forgotten our ancestors. We of Pan-African ancestry can rediscover history once lost to us. That our ancestors were more than conquerors. Kings and queens and more, our ancestors were kin group representatives, elected officials, farmers, scholars, blacksmiths, hunters, councilmen, councilwomen, warriors, diplomats, judges, prophets, healers. The headlines have moved on, but we remember that we didn't land on Plymouth Rock. Plymouth Rock landed on us. That we fought in every US war. That our ancestors read moss on the trees and the stars in the sky when words on a page were denied them. We sang songs of freedom, codes and messages, songs of pain, suffering, joy, and hope that the world itself cannot resist. The headlines have moved on, but we remember that Chicanos didn't cross the border, the border crossed them. That many Mexican-American citizens were deported before they could immigrate. That exclusion was once written to the law, asked Chinese-Americans. That the Axis was in the only side of World War II to force citizens into camps, ask Japanese Americans. That the Axis wasn't the only side of World War II to let anti-Semitism flourish, ask Jewish Americans. The headlines have moved on, but we remember that women, yes, even white women, were beaten by the police in the street for wanting to vote for wanting to work at something other than sewing in a flammable factory. That 99% of European Americans in the antebellum South could never afford one slave, while the 1% owned hundreds each. That Americans fought and died for things like the weekend, the 40-hour work week, basic workplace safety, and the right to unionize that Americans had to fight to keep five-year-olds out of factories and arsenic out of processed food. The headlines have moved on, but we remember the need for a living wage and unions for all, that we are the 99%, that black lives matter, that women marched, that poor people breathed life into a campaign of their own, that we stood with Standing Rock while the lost weaponized water against water's own protectors. The headlines have moved on, but we remember that this system is designed to divide and conquer. So why not call in before calling out? The headlines have moved on, but we remember, I will continue to remember, to listen to women, to give survivors of all gender the benefit of the doubt to throw victim blaming in the trash that God herself waits for our consent. 
God herself waits for us to peer behind the torn veil and see one. Thank you so much, Des. That was amazing. That was so beautiful. <laughs> um, next up, we have Mukui Mutunga. Did I say that right? So I have a piece um, that's been inspired by one, by um, Henley. The title is Invictus. It translates to invincible. And through the years, it has come to be known as one of Nelson Mandela's favorite poems. And one of the lines in that poem says, I thank whatever gods may be for my unconquerable soul. I must admit there are many, many days that I'm not quite sure whether that's true for my soul. So like any good artist, I wrote about it. It's called Vincible. From the midst of the darkness that surrounds me, black as the pit from wall to wall, I beg whatever gods may be, please stop. Circumstance extended her tendrils tenderly, inviting me to hide my dreams neath her wings and whisper my wants. Together we hop hills, glide over grasslands, but as we drift, her design began to fade. Tendr tend tendrils turned to talons, clawing at my eyes, threatening my sight. I realized these things, these wings do not soar towards light. In ensnared in her clutch, hurtling downwards, I, I do more than just wail. I cry aloud and throw my crown, for I refuse to be a descendant of the damned. I shut my eyes, waiting for darkness to cover me when I catch a glimpse of chance. To my negative, repellent, magnetic field, he was positive. Purses his lips to the back of my hand, and once again, I'm flying floating beyond what ifs and maybes, ignoring the gangrenous spawns of circumstance, I take chance at his word. Higher and higher we seem to glide, and then, oh, and then, I am bludgeoned till I'm bleeding. My uncrowned head now bowed. The truth is, the menace of the years finds, finds and still finds me in the place of wrath and tears. Looming in the throes of this horror is the shade, constantly robbing me of both my word and my deed. I am now, I am now afraid. And yet, he finds me, not as he would like me, but as I fight every day to be, reminding him and I that I am the master of my fate. I am the captain of my soul. For out of this night that covers me black as the pit from pole to pole, I thank whatever gods may be that my soul is still unconquered. Thank you. That was just divine, oh my gosh. <laughs> you can all clap again while I'm fixing this. Okay. Next up, we have Divine Dupree. Hello, my name is Divine Dupree. Um, I wrote this poem um, when I was kind of mad at America at one point. It's called America. Um, I am the land of the free 
and the home of the brave. I am where one can have free speech, where religion is yours to keep. I have beautiful cities and towns where people can laugh and walk around, loving families, people hugging, people laughing and enjoying life. But wait, not for all. I got to watch out for some. The minorities don't have equality. I shoot when they speak louder than me. I laugh when they think they are truly free. I wish for sweet, not, sweet things in their air, and then boom, take it back so they could disappear. But believe me when I say, I am the land of the free and the home of the brave. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing. That was wonderful. Ne okay, I really can't read this. <laughs> um, who signed up for seven o'clock? Does it? Okay. Sorry, <laughs> no, you're good. I'm so sorry that I can't introduce you, but everyone, please welcome them as they come up. Um, full disclosure, this is definitely my first time performing. I'm more of a writer, but <laughs> um, I want to start with a piece titled Reflection. Um, so here it goes. I didn't want to burden you with my pain, so I shut up for 14 years. I didn't want to burden you with my pain, so I shut out any help and dealt with myself by myself, feeding into the narrative that we black women are strong, and we are, but maybe the narrative is we black women are supposed to be strong. Maybe the idea perpetrates solitude when in fact two are better than one. You don't want to burden them with your pain is what Satan whispered in my ear for years, so much so that I believed him for too many years. And this liar caused me to bottle this brokenness inside, sho shoving my heart as far as I could aside, fooling myself into thinking time heals all wounds. Love, listen to me, pain is like a tumor, some benign, you can let time work, some um, malignant, ignore it, and you could very well die. You don't want to burden them with your pain. I entertain that thought for the very last time, reason being, I realize that Satan operates in secrecy, and this would be the last time I was bound by deceit. If you guys don't mind, I didn't want to end on that note, so I have two more pieces. Um, so this second one is kind of just like, um, I don't know, an appreciation for art and what it means to me. I've met a few artists, asked one about his craft. He told me that he thought in metaphors, and in the most ordinary, I began to look for them. I was photographed by an artist who painted Kansas City in a different light. The same way some wordsmiths I've stumbled ac across are able to take a concept so mundane and show me beauty in even the most ordinary. There are artists whose books I all intend to collect and stack on my bookshelf so I'll, ha I'll have in my home when I'm finally settled so I can look back and be reminded of the joy that I was gifted when sad sadness gripped me and wouldn't let go. God granted y'all a gift. I cherish the conversations I've had with beautiful people who have had even more beautiful minds. When the world gets too heavy, I have found escape in your art. Um, and my last piece is titled Joy, um, joy juxtaposed. How did you do that? Both stop time and cause my heart to race in sync to the beat of both paranoia and utter elation, elevating me to a euphoria, both causing all the sense I had to leave, lightening my head, and emotion to rise up, heating my face, brightening my aura fleeting, fleetingly because I dared to bathe in yours. Thank you. Okay, everyone give up one more round of applause for Bethlehem. That was so beautiful. <laughs> Next up, we have Maya McGregory. Jeez. Hi. Hello. Happy Black History Month. Happy Black History Month. Amen, amen, amen. Uh, so, like, my name's Maya. Uh, I'm black. And so, like, I wrote a poem about it. And some of y'all pro probably heard it before if you're, like, on my social media. But anyway, <coughs> here we go. I said I'm black 
beyond definitions, without restrictions, unapologetically black, black with black intuitions. That's B L A C K, bright light and celestial night. That's Harriet with the navigations. Mama's crying and praying to whatever Lord. Brothers jumping from mothership to motherboard with skin from the sky and tea from the stars, outlasting the time of Earth, Saturn, and Mars. I'm black. Beyond definitions, without restrictions, unapologetically black, black with black intuitions. That's B L A C K, beautiful love and Karen Ken. The village steps up to raise a child. Sis, gassing me up on IG. I'm barely five feet, but all these young girls looking up to me. Jump black love, jump in the broom, and black babies carrying the world's burdens before the womb. I'm black. Beyond definitions, without restrictions, unapologetically black, black with black intuitions, that's B-L-A-C-K, bold, lively, anti-monolithic killer, college girl, but a freak on the weekends, might listen to 21 Polys and 21 Savage, I'm a walking contradiction, defies all notions of average, you know, bald on Monday, braids on Tuesday, afro on Wednesday, needs moisturized with the cocoa, hair moisturized with the shea, I'm um, black. Beyond definitions, without restrictions, unapologetically black, black with black intuitions, as B L A C K beats love, art, color, culture, creators of everything there is. We in the field with a stomp clap. We gave you food, fashion, math, manners, rap, songs to lift the spirit with creativity so loud that the ancestors can hear it. I'm black. Sky skin, closet with skeleton, shining gold when the sun hits the melanin, pretty and smart, dripping in black excellence, you know, vitamin D packing full of black adrenaline, noir, pardon, sur la carte, noir, très belle, and jolie, come on. I be that city girl, cause it's black talk, English, Spanish, and French, I'm beyond this world, this black talk, euros, dollars, and yens, you know, this is my defense to anybody who not black, I'm sorry if it offends, I'm not really sorry if it offends, I'm just trying to make words wrong at this point. <laughs> You know, black, adjective, adverb, color, noun, black, cinnamon, coca, mocha, chocolate, caramel, mocha, gr coffee grounds in black, the only remnants of earth when the world comes crashing down in black. Rest in peace, Castile, Bland, Boyd, Taylor, and Brown, because they were, still are, just like me, black, beyond definition, without restrictions, unapologetically black, black with black intuitions. Thank you. That was insane, Maya. Thank you so much. That was crazy. And last but not least, we have Atlas. Hi, it's me. <laughs> um, I am Atlas. My name is Atlas Oberon Rees. I am a queer trans Latine. Uh, I am a journalist, a student, an artist, an activist, a singer, a musician. Uh, and tonight for y'all, I'm a poet. <laughs> um, I'm going to be real honest with you up front, and if y'all feel a little like, mm, I don't need that vibes right now. Um, a lot of my poetry revolves around uh, mental health and my lack of it. <laughs> uh, so if you guys are like, I don't need that in my soul right now. Uh, I don't want to pick up the vibes. That's also OK. I've, I respect. Now to start, this one's from 2020, so you can tell it's um, I wrote it at one in the morning. It's called Villain's Lament. Ranting to myself, because I'm the only one who will listen. Wishing someone will stop by and stop me from drowning. Wishing anyone cared about my thoughts, my fears, my past, my career. I'm not your library book. I'm not, your, I'm not an art exhibit. I'm not here to stop in when it suits you. I'm a fucking plant and I need nurture like everything else. Just give me some water, give me some time, give me some sunlight, let me know I'll be fine. I'm tired of carrying the world, I'm tired of fighting others' wars, 
but I can't just put my foot down and push everyone away. I know I'm not actually a protagonist, but I'm tired of being the secondary character in my own life. Maybe I just need some perspective. Maybe I've gone just a little insane. Maybe I'm losing my mind. Maybe I'm just diverting your gaze. What if I'm the big bad of the story? What if I'm the one who betrays me? Man versus self is a conflict, and it seems to be, it seems to perfectly describe me. I guess that just makes me crazy then. Guess those kids were right. Guess I'm the supervillain. Guess I'm the one who I've got to fight. Throw me off a tower. Let me fill my lungs. Penetrate my body. Let me drain from, let life drain from my wounds. I guess I'm too ambitious. I'm fucking exhausted these days. Maybe death by negligence might really be the way. Forget to make, take a meal. Forget to take a breath. Maybe forget I'm real. I'll send me to my death. I'm sorry my justification wasn't good enough for you. Now it won't work on me. Hold on. You have to actually be worth something to be something they mind losing. You're not here, and now I'm not either. Guess we both fucking lied. I don't know what to do here. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, I've got to hunt this next one down because it's been a hot second. I'm giving you old ones because the new one's a little short. <laughs> This next one is called Tornado. It was also written in 2020 at two in the morning this time. <laughs> I'm double checking it, I promise. All right, this will be fun. <laughs> All right. I needed a hug. I needed a second glance. I needed a break. I needed a second chance. Looking back, bro, I was lonely. I mean, I'm not much better now, but at least I found solace. Back then I was just so loud. It used to be cross signals, constant screeching noise, worlds living and dying honed as one voice. Now it's just static, the whisper of old friends. All my old friends have withered, all good things end. Each of my moments are fleeting, I'm like a desert snow, spectacular when it see it, when I, when you see it, then I just fucking go. And I hate myself for it, it hurts them every time, but that's how you catalyst, baby. No one said you could be sound. No, I'm the goddamn explosion, Kirishima, Nagasaki. I'm a fucking atom bomb, change your course, helping you grow, breaking your walls, letting you know. Not everyone comes out okay, but they all think they know. I don't even, you child. Since when were you so wise? Since when did you read minds? You know, I'm a person too. I'm not only a catalyst. I've got feelings too. I want to be loved more than just for change. I want to be more than t a teaching moment Give a shit about me for a change. You say that I'm important. My life matters too. Then you re leave without me. More litter in the ditch. Am I that disgusting? Am I that heart-wrenching? You clench in fear. Are you angry at me? You said I deserved something. You said I was a good friend. You loved how I cared about you. I never let it end. I'm glad to see you growing. While I'm broken, left behind. I'm tired of letting you know me. Quit robbing me blind. I'm not a trail marker. I'm not your magic wand. I'm not here to make you better or send you down beyond. I don't mean what fucking happens. I didn't do it to you. Chaos follows behind me, and it happened to consume you. Don't lecture me about this. I've seen it all before. Now start running, boy, because here we fucking go. My days are surely numbered, and s still so many left. Pick up those shoes, get going. Don't come meet my death. Don't you come meet my death. 
I'm like a damn tornado. Nothing stays in my wake. I'll tear your fucking house down. You've made a big mistake. I'm not just something pretty. I'm a motherfucking threat. I've taken down whole cities. You're scrawny ass, ain't it? Wake up, little lion man. I'm knocking at your door. You better shelter quickly before you're off the floor. Bigger men have stood to me. I've brought them all to tears. Watch them as they crumble. I'm the one they fear. I'm not even trying. Chaos is in my wake. Her name is fucking Karma. You called her a bitch. She's done with your damn slander. She's taken off your head. Back off and beg forgiveness. My bee, you fucking dead. I hope I didn't leave it on a bad note. <laughs> Thank you guys. <laughs> thank you. Um, thank you so much, Atlas. That was wonderful. That was really beautiful. Um, thank you to everyone for showing up, everyone who came to listen or um, share your words. Um, this project, especially mine, has been going on for a year. It's kind of weird. I thought I would be done with this by now, but, you know, here we are. Um, and it's... It's just been an interesting journey to kind of see it like go through different phases and exist in different places. And I don't think it's done. You know, I think something like this just resonates with people and connects and moves on to the next person and the next person. And clearly that's what happened here because look at all of you, right? <laughs> um, <laughs> so yes, thank you once again for coming to listen to us all. Um, thank you so, so much to Adina. Um, there's not very many people who you get to work with that are as amazing as Adina, especially you know this sweet, sweet PWI. So I really appreciate everything you did to make this happen and support me throughout this whole thing. Um, thank you so much. Thank you to Barry and everyone from Black Lawrence. I know some of them had to leave, but um, it was, honestly one of the best experiences of my life getting to meet you um and they even chipped in on my virtual exhibit so there's a video up of barry and ty and Marie, and on one of the most wonderful evenings we spent in the grove and i really appreciate that so thank you for being here and thank you once again, um, going back to the virtual exhibit, the rest of the anthology, Pass Me the Mic, is online, passmethemicexhibit.com. I probably should have had my own QR code, but <laughs> um, yeah, passmethemicexhibit.com. All my pieces are there. It's not all poetry, um, but as Adina said, it's just different pieces that kind of speak to hip hop and um, the black experience in multimedia. There's videos, there's audio, and just different things. So if that's something that you would like to explore, feel free. Um, thank you once again, and I hope you guys all have a safe drive or walk, bus, anything back home. <laughs> thank you.